green fig and, and, and banana, but it's a different thing. All right. So having said that, let's move on. We have been looking at the topic called purpose. And I was, I think I was telling First Lady, I don't know, I don't remember if it's today or yesterday. You know, there are lots of things that God has used me to teach on this platform. You see, this particular topic, this is one that is close to my heart. And this is one that I'm really hoping people are getting. I really hope you are understanding. And please, we want to take our time. We want to understand it. Because it's very, very important to every human being to understand purpose. And we said purpose is the reason for which something is done or created. That's what purpose is. Purpose is the reason, the reason why something exists. The reason why you exist is your purpose. We also saw that God, the God that we serve, is a God of purpose. God doesn't, didn't just create something. It wasn't an experiment when he created us. He created us for a reason. Everything that God created, he created it for a reason. Every tree, the fig tree and all, everything, the leaves, the ocean, the birds, everything, God created it for a reason. And that is why, again, I want to refer to one of the, the teachings that First Lady did on clean and unclean foods. There are certain things that you're not supposed to eat because God created them for a reason. God created them so that they would clean up the earth. God created them so that they would be the scavengers of the earth. And we are not supposed to be eating the scavengers. So everything has a purpose and a reason. And the purpose of something is determined by the person who created it. Not the manufacturer that we have been hearing. We're hearing about the manufacturer and it's in the mind of the man. No, the manufacturer is the one who produces it and sends it out. I worked in a furniture factory. And the person who owned the furniture factory was manufacturing the furniture, didn't invent the furniture. So the purpose is determined by the creator or the inventor. Okay? But the purpose is different to function. The function is determined by the person who is using it. So somebody might create it something for one thing and you're using it for another, another thing. And so we have to be careful of the function of things and how we function. We also said yet that your purpose was determined before you were born, not when you came to earth. We also said that your purpose doesn't change because you're not fulfilling it. Whatever you were born to do remains that reason until you die. We also said that you must be trained and processed and developed in order to fulfill your purpose. And we said that your purpose protects you we saw it protected Jesus and Moses and Joseph because they had purpose and Paul and you and I. The reason why we are living today, we are still alive, is because of purpose. We are here for a reason and we have not yet finished fulfilling our purpose. That's why we are still alive. And then we looked at why were we all created? What is the general purpose? What's the reason God created mankind? And we saw four things. One, God created us for his glory, for his glory, so he can show off, you know. Secondly, to be like him, to have dominion, to rule. He rules heaven, we rule earth. Then we saw that God created us to do good works. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good work. God created us to do good works. And fourthly, we saw that God created us for his pleasure. Thou art worthy to be receive honor and glory and praise, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are created. So that's the last thing we did last week. And so we want to continue now. And we want to look at our specific purpose, because God created us all for this general purpose. But how do we as individuals fit into that general purpose? How do we give God glory? How do we please God? How do we have dominion? How do we act like God? And that is found in our individual or specific purpose. So we want to continue here today. How do we know? How do I know what my purpose is? 
How do you know what your purpose is? Why you are here on earth? I want to tell you, I want to suggest to you that you can identify your purpose by three things. Three things. We're going to, first, we're going to look at three things and then we're going to break it down into, you know, into smaller things. There are three things that you need to look at to give you a clue as to what your purpose is. And those three things are one, the gifts that you have. The gifts that you have. Two, the talent and the skills that you have, which is different to your gifts. And three, the assignments that you are given. So if you're taking notes, take down these three things. Three clues to help you identify your purpose, the gifts that you possess, the skills or talents that you possess, and three, the assignments that you are given. Now, don't get confused. We'll talk about each one. Now, remember, the purpose of a thing, it determines the abilities that that thing has and how it's functioned. We said that. So you know the reason why something is by what it can do. What it can do. And this is what we are seeing. The gifts you have, the skills you have, and the assignment. So let's look at gifts first. Gifts are supernatural. The gifts we are talking about are supernatural. They are given by God. Every gift that is given to human beings is given by God. And the gifts that I'm speaking about are those that are given to those of us who have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. God doesn't give gifts to the unsaved. Only saved people have spiritual gifts. Why? Because the gifts come from the spirit. And they, they don't have the spirit living in them. They cannot have a spiritual gift. So only saved people have spiritual gifts. Now we are all spirit, every human being. But spiritual, spiritual gifts, gifts that are given to you, only saved people have spiritual gifts. Now, these gifts that God has given to us, we, he didn't just give us so that we can say we have gifts. These gifts need to be exercised. They need to be stirred up. They need to be used. Let's look at 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. And I don't think... I gave out these scripture verses, so the first person to find them. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6, and Romans 12, verses 4 to 8. 2 Timothy 1, verse 6, and Romans 12, 4 to 8. Could somebody read that for me, please, or somebody? 2 Timothy 1, verse 6. For this reason, I remind you to fan into flame the gift of, okay. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. That's right. So Paul is reminded Timothy, stir up the gift. Start using the gifts that are is in you. You got it when I laid my hands on you and you received it supernaturally. So you're not born with spiritual gifts. You are born again. When you are born again, you receive spiritual gifts. And so Paul was reminded, Timothy, I have given you have gifts that are inside of you. Stir it up. You don't have to learn it. You have to go to school to learn spiritual gifts. They are inside of you. Stir it up. Romans 12, verses 4 to 8. Somebody read that. Romans so 12. We have four. many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them if prophecy. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministry, he who teaches in teaching. 
He who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberty, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness, behave like a Christian. Let love be without hypocrisy. Okay. All right, only up to eight. Only up to eight. Okay, Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. So he says, having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. In other words, having then gifts different according to our purpose. We are given grace based on our purpose. We are given gifts based on our purpose. Whatever God has designed us for, he has given us gifts according to that. All right? And then Paul was talking about the, you know, different things that you do. So what are these gifts that I'm talking about? What are these gifts? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 11. What are these gifts, these spiritual gifts that are given to each one of us? Let's look at 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 to 11. Right. And it goes like this. There are diversities of gifts, gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it's the same God who works all in all. But a manifestation of the spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Mm -hmm. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the spirit, to another, the word of knowledge through the same spirit. Word of knowledge. To, to another, faith by the same spirit. Mm -hmm. To another, gifts of healing by the same spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. All right. So we have nine gifts here that are given to us. Not Each person does not have all nine. According to your purpose, according to why God has called you, he has given you gifts. It may be one, it may be two, it may be three, but God has given to all of us. So you have to start questioning yourself now and looking at these gifts. Which of these gifts God has given to me? All right, so we start to appropriate to ourselves now. We start looking at ourselves. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, gifts of healing, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits different kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues. We must fall into one of those. So we have to start asking ourselves now, which one is my gift? Which one? Now, I cannot tell you what is your gift. You have to know because the gift is given where? By the Spirit. So it is only the Spirit of God that can reveal to you so let's leave that there for now. We're going to come back to it. But the first thing, the very first clue as to what your purpose is, has to do with the gift or gifts that you have. Just remember that. The gift or the gifts that you have will give you a clue as to what your purpose is. Secondly, I remember I told you three things. The one is gifts. The second one is the skills or the talents that you possess. This one is easier to identify. The skill or the talent that you possess. The gifts that you have are given supernaturally. Some people get it by the laying on of hands. Some people get it by, because God spoke to them, deposited in them and revealed to them. But your skills are different. Your skills are natural. You can inherit skills. You know, 
your father was killed in a particular area and now you are killed in a particular area or your mother was killed in a particular area and some and somehow you were just born with that or your mother was a great cook and she taught you how to cook or your father taught you how to do these things. These skills can be learned. But somehow you're very proficient. You have learned it and you're excelling it. That is a clue. The thing about skills is both saved and unsaved people, people who are Christian and people who are not Christian, all possess skills. Not all possess gifts, but all people possess some sort of skill. You must know what you're good at. You must know what you're talented in. I, I tasted, and I wasn't supposed to do so, I tasted some bread today that one of our family members made. Oh boy. She's talented. And that's just one talent. And I watch my wife and my son, I'm sorry to expose you all, sit down and eat a bread just like that. Nothing in it. Just eat. Just both of them just sit down and eat it because it tasted so, it was so nice and soft and tasty. And I tasted it too. I'm trying to stay away from the flour, but I tasted it. She has skills. She has a talent for this thing. Thank God she's also saved. So your skill gives you a clue as to what your purpose is. And the thing about your skill, skills need to be developed and refined. Where gifts, gifts need to be stirred up and used because when you get a gift, you get a gift. When God gives you a gift, with his prophecy or whatever, God gives you a gift. When you have a skill, your skill might start off, you know, you have to practice and practice and practice so that it can be developed and grow. So a skill is developed through practice, through coaching, somebody coaching you, or hard work. Not so with a gift. You stir up your gifts, but you practice your skill to develop it. So whatever, whatever skill you have or whatever talent you have, the thing about it, gifts are used, as we saw, when we looked at the verse where the script, it was given by the Spirit for the benefit of all, all in the ministry, all in the, in the body of Christ. The thing about talent and skill, that is developed and anybody can benefit from it, whether they save or unsaved. If you're a good plumber, you don't only have Christian um, clients, do you? Or whatever your, your thing is. Sister Bernie, you work in the hospital. You don't only see about Christian patients. In fact, you don't, may not even know whether you're a Christian. So your gifts and so your skills and your talent can be used for anybody. So what we need to do as believers is to commit our talents to the Lord. Say, Lord, this skill, this ability, this thing that I've learned or this thing that I've developed, I want to use it for your honor and for your glory. We need to do that. Let's look at Colossians 3.17. Colossians 3.17 and Proverbs 22.29. Colossians 3.17. Chapter 3. Verse 17. And verse, are you hearing me? Yes, Lord, don't say. All right. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Whatever you do. Whatever you do. You'll be a doctor, a nurse, a, a plumber, a painter, a gardener, a... a Whatever else you do, whatever you do, whatever your skill is, whatever your talent is, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Some of us feel we go to work and we do what we have to do and we think it is just a job. The Bible says do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Whatever you do, that's, that's the word. Whatever you do, 
as a listener, to, if you're mopping or you're sweeping or whatever it is that you are called to do, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks. God, I thank you for the job. Lord, I know it's clean. I'm a cleaner and I'm cleaning, but God, I give you thanks. Whatever you do, whatever is your skill, whatever is your talent, do it in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is part of your purpose. Proverbs 22, 29. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 29. And it goes, do you see a man who excels in his work? He will stand before kings. He will not stand before unknown men. You see a man who, is, who excels in his work? If God wants to reach kings, God is not sending another king to talk to him. But you who excel in your work, you will stand before the king and you will declare the word of the Lord before the king, whether it's the prime minister or government ministers or whoever. Excel in your work, your skill, your talent, your ability. You've got to excel in it. Do it to the best of your ability and God is going to use you. So, three clues to help you identify your talent, your skills, your, your gifts, your skills or your talent. And your skill or your talent is going to lead you to the third thing that you can use to identify your purpose. And that is your assignment. Your assignment. For those of you who are taking notes, write it down. What is your assignment? An assignment is a task or a work, I'm giving you the definition now, allocated to someone to complete as part of a job or a course of study. We know when you're, study, when you're studying, you're given assignments to do, to bring back to for your teacher or your, your lecturer to mark, right? This assignment here is a task or a work that is allocated to someone to complete as part of a job. I am saying to you, family, that you have assignments on this earth. Some assignments are temporary and some are permanent. Every day as you wake, every day as you live, you have an assignment. And whatever you are assigned to do, or the person who has been assigned must have the knowledge, the skills, the resources, the abilities to complete the task. So God doesn't just assign you. He gives you the knowledge. He gives you the skills. He gives you the resources. He gives you the abilities. The ability is the anointing to do it. I want to say that again because I want you to understand. All of us have assignments. Things that we are supposed to be doing. It's a task. It's a work. It's something that we need to complete, whether it's on a daily basis, a weekly basis, and we have an assignment that we have to complete in this life. And if we know what our assignment is, then we will know what our purpose is. So God gives you skills. He gives you gifts. He gives you resources and he gives you abilities. The abilities that I'm talking about is the anointing to do something. You ever see somebody, two people doing something, the same thing, but one person just shines. One person just does it differently, better. That person is anointed to do it. I can tell you something. This is not a boast. This is not a boast. 
I know I am anointed to be on the radio because I don't have a radio voice. There are some people who have a good morning, how are you doing? And I don't have that radio voice. People hear my voice now and they think it's a radio voice because they get accustomed to my voice. I have an ordinary voice. But I know and I make this both in God that I am anointed to be on the air. Because some people play the same music and it doesn't sound the same. And I'm just telling you what has been said to me. Some people play music and, and they don't flow together. and it, it just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And they say, Professor, when you come in here, I always know when you're on air because of the, 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 the music you play and, 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 and what you say. That's anointing. When God has anointed you, you stand out. And your anointing is because of your assignment. My assignment every time I go is to be on air. I'm assigned there. I am assigned to do a particular job. And that gives me a clue as to what my purpose is. So you think about your own life. What is it about you that people say, what it is about this woman, boy? What it is about this man? You just excel. There's a particular gentleman. I don't know if he's what I can't see the... Um, I can't see the, the listing of names. He's just skilled on the drums, Brother Beans. He's anointed to do that. I don't know his personal story. I don't remember his personal story. But, you know, I, 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 I was part of the group that he was a part of. And it comes like that naturally to him. And I'm just saying, not saying that to make him feel good, but I have seen it firsthand. He can pick up things. He knows about the different types of music, different genres. He knows how to, you know, how to, how to play. I, I am not a drummer, so I don't know. When you are anointed, it comes easy. And people see it. And your anointing leads to your assignment. And as I told you, sometimes your assignment is temporary or it's permanent. That assignment that we had when we were in that group was a temporary assignment. We don't have the group anymore. But we were assigned there. And because we were assigned there, we had the skills. I used to sing. We had people who were singing, people who were doing backup, people who were doing keyboards and drums and that sort of thing. But that was our assignment. And our assignment took us to different places, different parts of Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean and wherever else. So we were anointed to do these things. We were skilled in doing these things. These things give you a clue as to what your purpose is. We're not done yet, you know. We still have some more things to talk about for you to identify your purpose. Now, your purpose, one of the things I said to you about purpose is that your purpose is permanent. Whatever God put you on this earth to do, God doesn't change his mind because it was done beforehand and because God knows all things he designed you in a particular way and placed you on this earth, sent you to this earth. So because your purpose is permanent, God does not take back his anointing. When you are anointed to do something, because your purpose is permanent, whether you're fulfilling it or not, he does not take back the anointing that is on your life while you are alive. Maybe it's grace that's keeping you. While you are, God does not take back. So whatever you are anointed to do from birth, you are still anointed to do it. What does Romans eleven twenty eight says? Say. All right, Doctor. It's Romans chapter eleven and verse twenty eight. Yes, sure. It says here concerning the gospel, they are enemies for concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake. But concerning Romans, the Romans eleven twenty eight, yes, okay, uh, twenty nine. Romans eleven twenty nine. Sorry, uh, all right, that's okay. 
Right. Sorry, Romans right, chapter 11. That's all right. Romans chapter 11, verse 29, it says, For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. You hear that? For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God doesn't revoke them. God doesn't say, I've taken back the gift of healing from this person. Or I've taken back the gift of prophecy from this person. Because they're not using it the way they support. He does not take it back. God, the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God does not revoke his gifts to you. Whatever your gifts are, whatever your anointing is, whatever your skills and your talents, God does not take it back. He built you that way and he sent you on this earth. So we have to be careful. We must not judge somebody's status with God by the anointing that is on their life. I want to say that again. We must not judge, judge somebody's status with God by the anointing that is on their life. What do I mean by that? You see somebody and they're preaching up a stuff. They can preach, man, when they preach people at the altar and they're crying and they're giving their heart to God and they say, this man is so anointed, but he could be sinning. He could be doing things behind closed doors. Do not judge people by the anointing that is on their life. He could be a great preacher, a great teacher. Even when I was looking at this, I said, God, I had to be careful because you're using me to teach and I had to be sure I'm in your will and I'm doing what you call me to do because I know I'm anointed to teach, Lord, but uh, you know, it just hit home to me when I was looking at it. Some people are anointed to do wonderful things. God doesn't take it back when they start to sin and to do wrong things. That's why we have to be careful. Don't idolize people. I don't care who they are. Whether their name starts with TD or whatever, stop idolizing people. Listen to the word that they teach and they preach, but the person themselves, regardless of the great anointing that is on that person's life, it does not say that that person is right with God. It doesn't say that. And that is why, that is why, in fact, let's look at Matthew 7, 21 to 23. Matthew 21 Matthew, to 7. Matthew 7. 21 to 23. 21 to 23. 7. Yes. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Can you imagine that? And that is why I'm saying, you'll, we look at people sometimes and we admire them and we big them up and we put them and we, you know, and we defend them because that person has a certain anointing on their life. And every time you see them, they, when, they, when they speak, man, sometimes they, the people are falling down when they're preaching. And all kind of things happen. They're anointed for that. But it does not mean they're walking in the will of God. And that's why Jesus said, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will. The question is, is that person doing the will of the Father? Because on the last day, they will say, but Lord, look, when I was preaching, look how much people get saved. Look how much, how much sinners turn back, Lord. Look at how much people get healed when I was teaching, when I was preaching, Lord. You, and you see, even people themselves, and that's why we have to be careful ourselves. We get tied up. Because we feel when we, when we preach and somebody you know, give their heart to the Lord, or we witness to somebody, and we tell them about Jesus, and they give their heart to the Lord. It's, you know, Lord, the Lord using us. So we're sinning, and we're not feeling guilty that we're sinning. You might be committing adultery or fornication, or we or we, we, we masturbating, or whatever we're doing, but God's still using us. 
And because God's still using us, we feel, hey, well, I okay, I good. Because look what happened in my life. I good. That's what we say. We think we are good because we are still being used. Romans 11, 21. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. God doesn't take it back. Because in the end, he still gets the glory. People are still being saved. People are still being blessed. People are still being delivered. But you could be on your way to hell. Got to be careful. So don't boast in yourself. Don't think that I am okay because I am. Listen, I go and I sing. When I sing, oh man, people are, are, are so touched. I see people crying in the, in the congregation and I, oh Lord God, I thank you for using me. And then, you know, you'll go home and, and as a man, you slap your wife, you beat your wife or, or a woman, you, you know, you, 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 you don't want to talk to your husband. You're cooking for him. You're doing this. Why? Because you're anointed to sing. God is using you in church, but he wants to use your home too. So the anointing plus obedience equals eternal life. When you're anointed and you obey God, that leads to eternal, eternal life. Anointing without obedience leads to hell. So you could be an anointed person going to hell, hell will be full with anointed people. Remember, your anointing is what leads to your purpose. The reason why you are anointed is so that you can fulfill your purpose. Are you hearing me? I want to stop here for tonight because we want to continue. I really want you all to get this. I uh, listen. It's in my heart. I'm saying uh, today. I said, Lord, I'm hoping that they get this. God help me to utter the right words, to say it the right way, so that people would understand. You need to get this, people. This is life and death here. We are looking at purpose. Why are we here? Why am I here? What am I doing here? How do I know? What gifts do I have? Some of you need to start searching out your gifts now. What talents and ability? Make a list of all these skills that you have. Every skill that you have. Make a list of it. And your assignment. We'll talk a little more about assignment tomorrow. Because your assignment is important. Where you are assigned is important. That will give you a clue as to what your purpose is. What do I mean by assigned? We will talk about that tomorrow, God's willing, when we come back. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Is there anybody with any questions, comments? Questions or comments, anybody? Anyone? Joshua? No com we, we have no comments, but um Sister Yene, her hand is up. Sister Yene. Hi, good night, everyone. I have one question that I missed. When you were speaking mm -hmm. about gifts and talents, you said that um I wasn't sure if you said that gifts are for like, to be used in the body of Christ, whereas yes. talents could be used for everybody. That's mm -hmm. what you said? Okay, yes. that's all I needed to know. Thank yeah, you. For the perfection of the saints, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay. More questions? I hope everybody understands. Tomorrow we will continue. We'll talk about assignments tomorrow. We'll talk about... We'll also talk about your calling and how that leads to your purpose. So thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. I love you dearly. And I'm handing back over to Joshua. Thank each and every one of you for staying with us till the end of um, our Bible study. Um, I truly hope that you guys understood and will use this message because this topic is very, very important. This topic of purpose 
is very, very important and can change people's lives. So remember to share the video and invite people on um, so that they too can get the anointing of the message. So first, before I close off, um, I see that First Lady would like to address you. So First Lady. I just wanted to say to the family tonight, it is so powerful what the Holy Spirit is doing um, in, in this year and speaking to us. The, the, the word and the ministry is fresh and it's real. And, you know, this topic, especially um, that we are dealing with, I think because we are going into a fast now, and I hope that you're really getting excited about that fast, it is a grand time because the Lord is speaking to us. And when we get into that fasting, you can clearly understand what is your gift and your talent. Use this upcoming fast to seek God on it as he speaks to us in this time and in this season. Because we don't want to be left behind. Amen. Use this opportunity. I'm really, really so strengthened by this um, ministry that God is using Dr. Richards for. And I'm asking you to get excited too as well and take the opportunity and tell Father, now that I'm going into this fast, Father, speak clearly to me so that I can know because we don't want to be left behind. Amen. It's a serious year for God's people. Okay, thank you, First Lady. So, Again, thank you for staying to the end with us and remember to invite people on and just another reminder of our upcoming fast. Again, as First Lady mentioned it from the 10th of March to the 30th, remember to invite people on, especially if it's your first time fasting. This is an excellent time to get into fasting and especially if you haven't been baptized yet on the 30th of March, when we end our fast, there will be a water baptism and also we'll be laying hands on those of you who need deliverance and, uh, and uh, reaching out to God for um things for breakthroughs in your life come out on that day join us on our fast and come out on that day and truly miracles will take place on that day remember to invite people so that um <laughs> i said i feel like i said this a lot but thank you yeah. for staying to the <laughs> i feel like i'm repeating myself but we really do appreciate you taking time out of your night to come and show up here especially um with this message so I love you all so very much on behalf of my family <laughs> to yours, Dr. Richards, First Lady, myself, Jonathan and Judah. We all love you so, so very much. So before I let you go, um, I wanted to remind you that Jesus Christ talking to his disciples, which are us. And remember, we want to be disciples of Christ, not followers, but disciples. So he's talking to us, saying, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. So ye ought to love one another. By this, all men shall know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. So don't forget to show your love in whatever way possible. Tell someone good morning, hold the door open for them, or simply just hug them up and say, I love you. So I love you all so very much. And I would like to give you, actually, you know what? I never do this, but I want to give you an assignment. So when we leave here tonight, I want you to hug up your family members and tell each and every one of them, I love you. Because is sometimes we don't, even though we are with them all the time, we don't always say I love you. So I want you to hug up your people in your house and say, I love you, right? when we leave here tonight. So I love all of you so very much. So tonight when we leave, I'll be hugging up First Lady and hugging up Dr. Richard saying, I love you because you don't say that enough. And it's not until they you leave. So we, yeah, we, 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 yeah, we, all, yeah, we say it all the time. We say it all the time. Oh but I'd like you to say that as well because sometimes it's not until people leave us that we really yeah. um, regret yeah. not saying, yeah, we really yeah. don't, um, we really miss them. And we don't take the opportunity to say I love you. So say I love you to the people that you love. So I love you all so, so very much. It really was a pleasure being with you tonight. Oh. We are back here tomorrow at 8 o'clock for, no, um, well, Seven 8 o'clock. Well, yeah, 8 o'clock for, for Kingdom Study, but the Zoom will be over from 7 for worship. So good night to each and every one of you. See you back here tomorrow night.
Good night, everyone. Love, love night. you all. Good night. Love you too. Good love night. you. Love you. Love I you. am hugging everybody. Davia says, Davia, I'm hugging I you too. I'm hugging you real tight. I'm hugging all of all it tonight. All of you all. I'm hugging you. So tight, Minister Jeeva. I'm hugging you, Suzanne, Samantha. I'm giving you tight hugs, people. Love this family. Best, bestest family in the world. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, family. Love you all. Good night, family. Love you all. Love everybody. Thank you for the wishes. Love I am feeling all that love and well, hugs. Yes, love to you, Elder Mary. Thank you for that love. Thank you, Sister Debbie. It's contagious. Can you share how you feel in your hug? <laughs> <laughs> Elder Sherry, are you feeling your hug from me? Sister Joan, are you feeling the hug? <laughs> well, the root, I ain't feel that hug tight, tight, tight. Well, you know, just feel it tight. I want it tight. And Sherry, don't ask me for what? I hear now, the Sherry. And the root, I am feeling that hug that I can't even find <laughs> the uh, I am squeezing <laughs> each and every one right of back you. Right back at you. Oh, love, love, love. Love you all so much. I was wondering, God bless you. I was wondering, Ella Sherry, what is going on? I thought you left us. No, 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 not at all. <laughs> good bless good you. Night, have good, good night. night. Love you guys. Good night. Love you guys. Annie, good night. Brother Beans, Bernadette, Colleen. Good night, good night, good night. Mm -hmm.